Hey everyone, welcome today to our Growing in Christ Bible Study. Uh, I'm Gabe Saldivar from Life Church of Orange, and we're glad that you could join us today as we're going to be continuing on in Matthew chapter 6, 1 through 4, The Reward of the Giver. So you may notice I don't have my best friend here with me today. Susan can't uh, make it today, and so I'm going it alone uh, temporarily. So look forward to having her back uh, again soon. But um, right now, uh, it's just going to be me. So we're going on here uh, as we're studying on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Jesus now is tra transitioning to another aspect of, li of the life of the believer, and that is giving. Uh, as a child of God, as we are maturing in the Lord, uh, this also means learning and understanding how to give. And, and so a stingy person, first of all, doesn't reflect the nature of Christ. A stingy person is not in line with the nature of a new creation, a child of God. Uh, but also, uh, this also doesn't reflect the generous nature of God the Father. And we should understand when we obey what Jesus says, there's a reward that exceeds what we could imagine. So let's turn here, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 4, if you have your Bible there. Uh, let's open up here. It says, Take heed that you do not that you uh, that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will re himself reward you openly. Now, Jesus stresses the importance of not seeking the praise of people, but in seeking the kingdom, seeking the kingdom of God. Consider that he closes a section of the sermon with seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. Now, Jesus is giving us wise counsel here not to draw attention to, to good deeds, not to be those that say, look, look at me, look at what I'm doing. I'm, I'm giving to people. I'm, I'm, I'm giving to, I'm helping the poor. I'm, I'm doing all these things. Jesus is saying, don't do that. Don't draw attention. Look at how much money I give to the church. Look at how much money I do this. Don't do that. Specifically when you're helping other people, when you're, when you're being generous and giving, don't ruin it by drawing attention to yourself and, and, try, and saying, look, look at me and art with a motivation to impress others or to get glory for yourself. First of all, everything that we, ha everything that we have, everything that, that, uh, you and I as people, uh, uh, our resource, everything that we have comes first and foremost from God. K King David proclaims in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14, he says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. Romans eleven thirty six 36 says, for of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. What has been put in your hand, uh, what, it, what has been provided to you came from the Lord. What we give is God's ultimately. So we can't even boast in what we give because it's all God's to begin with. Now wisdom teaches us that if we boast in our giving, if we draw attention to our giving, so as to demonstrate our own goodness, we have no reward from the Father in heaven. Jesus says, do not sound a trumpet. Don't, don't create all this attention to yourself. Do not try to get everybody to say, you know, look at me. Look, look, look what I'm doing. Uh, although you may receive glory from people. Although when you do that, people will go, wow, wow, look at what you did. Wow, oh, that's impressive. That's impressive what you've done. And, and, and you'll, you may get glory from people, but truly, we know that it doesn't last. People will eventually forget your charitable deeds. And you can build statues. You can uh, dedicate buildings. People uh, will eventually go on with their lives and forget what is done. But yet, if we will seek God's glory, we will receive 
uh, a reward from God that is eternal, that never fades, that, that uh, never goes away. Now, the term ch charitable deeds or alms would be uh, money that you'd give to people in need. And that's what Jesus was referring to here when he opens this up. The Lord calls us to help others, especially those of God's house, our brothers and sisters in Christ. James 2, 14 through 17 says this, If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what is a profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Right? James is, is saying, uh, look, if somebody comes to you, a brother or sister comes to you, and they have need, but all you do is you just say, be warmed, be filled, but you don't do anything to help them. What is that? Right? That, that's, we, we, as God's people, we need to look out for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to uh, do something for them as much as we are able to. Now, there is a reward from our Father in heaven when we do good to others secretly and with sincerity, without motivation to get attention. Now, why do we do this? What, what's the, what, why would we do something like this? Because a child of God wants to please his Father in heaven, just as Christ was a Father pleaser. The reward we get is we get God. The Lord is our reward. And his reward for us and to us it's eternal. With God, we have everything. He's everything we need. He truly is everything that we ultimately desire. When you get to that place of, uh, uh, when you quiet your heart down and you, you realize what do we really want in this life? What are those things that we really need and desire? Well, you and I, as people made by God, made in his image, what we truly want, what we truly desire is we want God, is love, joy, peace, all these things that only God can truly bring. It, love is the ultimate, if you consider it. Everybody, everybody wants love. They just might define it in different ways, but ultimately what we're all looking for is to love and to be loved. Uh, and, and sometimes, even in destructive people, it's because somewhere along the line that message got damaged and, and how they perceive to receive love and, and to give love might be damaged or broken, but initially they started out that way. 2 Corinthians 5 uh, verse 9 says, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. Again, this underscores the apostles. They understood this. They desired to please God the Father. It was the same way Jesus um, was a father pleaser. As a disciple of Christ and following him, we're going to seek after his ways uh, thinking the way he thinks, uh, and, and in, as we seek him, we will mature and learn to measure the situation with his perspective. We will grow in his agape and, and love God and love others as God the Father loves, as he loves us. And this too is being about our Father's business. When we look out and care for others so that God, so that the Father would be glorified. Not looking to glorify ourselves, but we're looking that God, we're seeking that God will be glorified. As a child of God, we want our reward to come from God the Father and to receive his praise. Not like the religious leaders of whom John uh, chapter 12, verse 43, it says, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Ask yourself, when you give or do charitable deeds, what is your motivation? When you're giving, what is your motivation? Where, where, what's in your heart? And do you say, do I want people to notice what I'm doing? Or am I expecting some favor in return if I give? Am I expecting something to come back to me? Or, or people to, hey, remember I did this? Uh, you owe me. Well, consider what Luke chapter 6, verses 34 through 35 says. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return or expecting for nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Wow, right? How does Jesus cap that off in Luke? He's thank he is uh, kind to the unthankful and evil. So what does that say for us? So here's the motivation. Jesus says, that we should have. Be like our Father in heaven. 
sons and daughters of the Most High God are going to desire to be like their father. We've already talked about loving your enemies and doing good. We've talked about that previously. But here in Luke, Jesus adds that lend with no expectation of return. You're not giving to get something back from people. We don't give expecting that people are going to give back to, to us. That, that's the wrong perspective, right? You shouldn't say, well, they can't ever do anything for me, so why should I give to them? Exactly. Exactly. That's a great way to, to look at it. That's a great uh, place to launch from. They can't give anything back to me, so I want to do what the Lord would want me to do. I'm going to give to them. I'm going to uh, uh, help in this situation and be generous, just as the Father is generous to us. The Father sees and He rewards, and the reward will be great. Again, He is our reward. There is no end to the riches in Christ Jesus. Ultimately, it's because of God's love working in us, the agape of God that is changing who we are. When, we, when we're generous, we're more like God than we might even realize because God is a giver and he wants his children to be like him. So we, in turn, grow in being givers. Furthermore, let us be warned and consider Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 11. It says, uh, But there was a certain man named Ananias who with his wife Sapphira sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. And then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell, as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Then some young men got up, wrapped him in a sheet, and took him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied, that was the price. And Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door, and they will carry you out too. Instantly, she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And verse 11 says, Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. Now, this is the extreme example of wanting the glory for yourself and not for God. They didn't fear God. Satan filled their hearts, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. They thought that they could get away with this. They thought they could fool others to make people believe that they were something that they weren't. And there was great hypocrisy there. They definitely weren't like God. And sadly, they were like Satan. Satan had filled their hearts, deceived them. Now, there may be those who will try to deceive. There may be those who are hypocritical in their giving and, and try to harm God's people. But unless they repent, God's justice always prevails. God uses all things, right? He'll, he'll, he, he always works things out in the end. Matthew 6, 4 says, When you obey God's word, giving the way he says to give, the Father will reward you openly. Now, consider Barnabas in Acts chapter 4, verses 36 to 37 says, for instance, there was Joseph, the one, the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Uh, he was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. Barnabas was called a son of encouragement because of his giving, the way he gave, the way he refreshed others and was an encouragement to God's people. He was not seeking praise from people, but he was looking to help. He was looking to bless others. He, in, in a childlike faith and, and a generosity, he just said, look, I've got this land and I want to give it for the use of the kingdom and to be a blessing to God's people. And this type of action, this type of heart, this is what pleases God. And, and this is, uh, we find that this has been recorded in God's word forever. This, this passage, right, about Barnabas, we know of this because the Holy Spirit uh, uh, told Luke 
right? He inspired Luke to record this and future generations like you and I, we know of um, Barnabas' actions, his generosity, he glorified God in this, and we know of this, and so it's going to be recorded forever. All those who know of the Word of God, until the Lord Jesus returns, the Word of God uh, lives forever b beside that, but as far as you and I as reading in our Bibles, reading in the Word of God, we're always going to know about Barnabas and his generosity. We don't know him as Joseph, but we do know him as Barnabas. You hear the name Barnabas, it's like, wow, his name was changed because of his generosity. Something to think about. I, I want uh, to close with this thought. When we give with a heart that desires to honor God, that does not seek to honor ourselves or glorify ourselves, the Lord Jesus Christ says, the Father sees this, that, that God is aware of this. He sees everything, but he also, he's pleased when we have a generous heart. He's pleased when we can share with others, when we care for others. And I'm not talking about... Uh, giving to the church. I'm talking about when you're kind and generous with one another, when you look out uh, for God's people, but when you, when you also see those who are in great need and, and need help. The Father never forgets, and God will repay. Proverbs 19, 17 says, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Remember that our Father in heaven, he's pleased when his children follow his ways. Let us be generous to each other and look out for each other. The love of God is demonstrated and at work in us when we give without a self-seeking motive. Again, let us remember he's our reward and, and there's nothing that compares to the reward that we have in God. I hope that you were blessed by this. I'm glad that you could join us today and uh, just wanna bring encouragement to you to your day and uh, that you'd be inspired by God's word, that the word of God would speak to you, the spirit of God speaking to each of us. He's the ultimate teacher. He's the one that helps us to remember uh, the Lord's words and that as we take it in each day, let it be in our hearts and, and come out in our words, come out in our actions. God bless you. We love you, church family. And uh, we remind you this Sunday, we're gonna be on at 10, 15 a.m. Pastor Glenn Whitaker is gonna be teaching from God's word. So it'll be great encouragement. We, uh, you don't want to miss it and uh, join us this Sunday morning. And then we'll, we will be back here again next week uh, as we're going through God's word. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.